Hey guys, Mauro here, and another session of rapid fire where I'm gonna give you tips. This today is gonna be everything about the forehand. Short tips, you know, several tips to kind of make kind of make it short, you know, so you can go through all of them. And we're gonna well, let's go ahead and start. And we're gonna go. The first tip is leave when when you're getting ready. When you're getting ready, preparation up here. Um, you wanna bring you wanna bring that uh, the the elbow to generate more power. When when you prepare there, sometimes if, if you prepare too low and then from here you have to generate then go down and up. Sometimes it's, this is not enough distance or height to really bring that racket down to really bring that racket down and up. You wanna feel you can start like with lifting just a little bit that elbow like you're gonna elbow someone back here preparing more up here and the and, and the loading you you load and you prepare there and that's and that's going to help you generate a ton a ton more speed on that racket and a lot more more power one perfect example something that you can go and check on youtube on the slow motion uh, videos is um, del potro's forehand that's the one is one of the most you know where you can really see very clear how the guy prepares high and he goes down and up and that's he generates that momentum by the time he makes contact with the ball his racket has plenty of speed because he's starting from up here not really too uh, um not really too low um okay tip number two guys the load the load when when we're when we're getting ready you see the ball coming and many times there is people that just turn here uh-huh or they even don't 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 use their, their legs, you know. They just kind of go here and go, see. And many times, it's all all you're using, all you're using is your arm. You want to pay attention on the on, on your load. What you're gonna do is it's kind of you're ready, and and it's kind of a side step. It's kind of a side step, and you gotta feel your knees. That's what's what's gonna work. It's more like a you ready here, coming, side step side the step and, see, and look at my knees you you want to feel this obviously when the ball comes really high you're not you're not gonna need to you're not gonna need to use the knees as much but one important thing is that as soon as you see that ball coming see i see plenty of people that they're gonna they have to move towards the ball and they just kind of go they 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 settle and then they turn and go you know like everything at the very last moment pay attention move move and you want to get ready you want to get ready to get that low that side step a little longer in order to open open your stand you know you're, you're gonna be semi open in stance and you're gonna be ready to load it and hit you want to feel like you're really moving through the ball like punching like transferring your weight forward okay uh, let's go tip number three okay Relax your arm, okay. Relaxed right hand, arm, and wrist to bring the wrist forward, okay. When when you get the ready up here, when they get the racket up here, sometimes sometimes you we kind of get too tense, you know. We kind of get tense with the arm. There are players that they kind of overextend. It's very important that when you load it and you this arm did you want to make sure that you keep that right arm totally relaxed you gotta remember that arm is gonna work like a whip you're gonna whip like that ball it's like a rubber guys so again remember remember how how you when you're gonna throw that rock on the leg you know that you want that you want that rock to just go like you know you know flying like that and it goes you go like that you know and it bounces 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 so that's exactly the same feeling you want to have with the arm. You got to relax it. You got to relax it. Why? Because because when once once I start my swing, see once I start this part, my hand is going to do this. That's a snap that I want to create. If I'm too tight, you're not going to create that snap. You you just everything you're going to feel like you're doing everything it would it's, it's going to feel like a big effort doing all this swing. And it's not gonna it's not gonna be a quick it's gonna be like hitting with a stick your arm is too stiff so you want to pay attention you load ready and go you want to feel that the moment you let those hips go that arm that hand is gonna come start snapping coming to the front but it's totally relaxed and that's where it starts where it starts go down to do the 
petting the dog and the extension. So you really want to pay attention. It's very important to have, in general, it's very important to have the whole body relaxed all the time. Every time you play tennis, guys, you always have to be relaxed. Otherwise, the shot and the, 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 your ground strokes are not going to work well. But this is very de definitely very important on that forehand because you're going to do a snap. In order to do that whip, you really need to feel like that arm is like a rubber. So pay attention to that. Okay, guys. Um, next one. Okay. When, when many times I see players that they overdo the jumping part when they hit. You know, they, 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 they feel like they have to jump on every shot, every shot they hit. If you pay it, if you if you have the chance to go and check a um, a video of a match of Federer or any professional player, they usually they usually jump on the shots that they have time and they're above their hips. See, that's a shot when you move, you know, and you want to jump on that one and mostly moving forward, you know, it's a shot that you have the especially that you have the time to do it. You don't have to do it all the time, but you have the time to do it and you jump mostly above your hips or above the net level let's say when it's a lower when it's a low uh, let's say above the net level those shots you know you don't want to jump definitely you don't want to jump because it's very easy to miss hit it it's very easy to hit it that's when you're going to be overdoing it and miss hitting the ball so on the on the low one you when 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 you have usually when you see the players rallying from the baseline they don't jump when the rally is fast a regular rally boom 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 you don't you, you don't see the players hitting 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 and, and jumping all the time no you see gets to that ball recovers hits and recover you know they're not really jumping when they have time and they have a more comfortable ball especially moving inside the court that's when they can move and they jump they probably jump in order to generate more power more spin you know and move faster but when you I, I would say when you rally when you're rallying that's when you want to pay attention, settle down your feet on the ground. That's actually where you're going to generate more power off the ground. When you when you get the, uh, the low ball, a lot of people think like that ball is kind of coming low. I'm not going to be able to generate a lot of power. Yeah, you can generate a lot of power. You just got to be able to rotate and rotate and uh, coil and uncoil and keep your feet on the ground. But that's when you really can generate a lot of power, guys, if you settle down and you do the coil and uncoil with the right timing, of course. But pay attention. Pay attention when you're rallying. The ball is coming. The ball is coming. Move, move, move. Settle. And 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 if the ball is not a, it's not a ball that you can really attack. If it, if you know if it's like I say like a regular rally, probably with a lot of a lot of speed on the shots. You know you don't really have time to be jumping and stuff. Well, turn, settle, and go. And that only is not gonna help you generate power, but it's also gonna help you not moving, hit the ball cleaner. Move better center right in the center of the strings um, one of the if, if you think about it you never see we never see a boxer or or a, or a pitcher or a foot or, or a quarterback you know hit punching or tossing or, or throwing that ball you know kind of jumping no they're they're in position and they go why because when when, when you keep your feet on the ground you it's like you, your feet are the foundation. It's the base where, where where you can generate the upper body to coil, and you let it go and uncoils. You know, it's like the it's like the mattress spring that you grab it from the bottom and you twist it on the top. So if you grab it from the bottom and you release the top, it's gonna it's gonna go back to to its to its initial position fast. 
So that's that's when you're punching. When you're punching, you don't punch and jump, you know? You punch from here and you load and you go. So every whenever you think, whenever you think, um, when you're hitting the ball, that's one, one good thing that you can use as a reference, punching. If I'm gonna punch down here, I'm not gonna punch. I'm not gonna jump, I mean. So that's why when I hit the ball down here, I don't need to jump. When I wanna hit the guy up there, okay, then I can, I, I have the time, I, I, I jump, you know, and I punch it. But usually, even shots that come at stomach height, you know, or even the chest, if you're in good position, you know, you settle, and you, how does the upper body accelerate? Why, how does it accelerate? Well, it accelerates because you have a good, your feet on the ground, because you have solid, you know, you have your steady feet on the ground. If the feet on, if the feet on my, if my, if my lower body moves, then I'm killing the shot. I'm killing the punch. So you, you pay, atten uh, pay attention to that, guys. All right? Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, another thing is when the ball is coming, we talked about it, you, you get in position, you don't want to turn all the way. There are going to be shots where you have to run, well, you hit it like that, you know? You're going to have to run and hit totally facing the side. But when you have the time, whenever you have the time, you want to get to that, to that shot and get in semi-open position. So your body's not on the way. Your body, you got it, can, can coil and uncoil all the way to the front. So pay attention to the lower body being in a semi semi open position that's good enough semi open position is more like thinking it, it's it's very easy to remember guys imagine that when you're on the baseline instead of turning instead of turning all the way to the side you're turning more towards the net post on your right hand side let's say that's your forehand that's it you can go even a little less than that the only thing you have to do is just don't put the left foot in front of the right one if you're a rider like me you know just keep it a little bit away out of the way so i can coil and I can finish turning my body all the way around. Okay. Um, when you swing, this is a very common mistake. Swing, you swing, you start with the right, with the right, with the right position of your racket, the right angle of the racket and the arm, come in here. And a lot of people, as they start swinging, they start opening they, they let that let that wrist start kind of straightening up this way so instead of keeping that angle they start going more straightening here and instead of making contact here they go more there a little far back far back and instead of here uh -uh -uh, far out see so that's one thing that you want to that you really want to pay attention try to keep that wrist more steady firmer not so firm that you're tense just firm enough so you can control the shot it won't give way it won't wobble you know but be careful be careful i i see that plenty of times hitting people that they let that wrist go uh, like that and by the time they make contact the racket is like this instead of looking more in front of you closer to you solid and steady so um pay attention to the wrist guys when you hit it there okay The elbow at the end I make contact and sometimes I see people that finish here see so you know one when I when, when I finish low here I'm not gonna generate as much power because I'm not really letting that elbow come around I, I don't generate as much power but mo more than anything you're not gonna generate enough um, height and obviously depth so just to start, start practicing hitting, boom, and bring that elbow more or less at chin height. Just, just to start like that, just to start like that, bringing that elbow at, at chin height. Eventually, as you become better, there are gonna be times where you're gonna finish a little lower, you know? There are gonna be times when you finish a little higher. You're going, it's going, there are gonna be variations according to the kind of shot that you wanna make. But just to start, just to create the muscle memory, try to try to get ready, tap the dog, and bring it to the chin. From from petting the dog here to coming to the chin, petting the dog, and bringing that elbow to the chin. Um, and and that is something that is something that is going to help you, like I said, create the muscle memory. 
and eventually you adjust it. You go. Uh, I have said this before. In tennis, there is no one size fits all for every in anything. Serve, volley, backhand, forehand, anything. I can I I can I can I can help you and 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 teach you the you know some stuff from the forehand and some stuff from the backhand and your coach can help you with serve or whatever whatever you learn it. But the truth is that we learn something and 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 we have we're gonna shape that swing according to our game according to our personal um, preferences and also uh, you know like sometimes some people are most are, are are a little tighter than others some people are more stretchy so it's easier for them finishes all the way some people cannot really go that far but they can still finish here so in the end you end up you end up shaping everything that you learn or customize it to how you like it to what works for you see what what me or anybody uh, teaches you guys is not anything written in stone you know it's just something that is gonna is gonna it, it can start it gives you the push the idea how to do it but in the end once you master it you're gonna have to adjust it to your own game and the way it fits you better okay all right guys well that is it for uh today um i hope it helps give me any questions suggestions let me know give me a like subscribe to my channel and i'll see you next time